for Hugo Fernandez, who couldn't be here with us today. Um, and with me today are our fantastic guests, Paul Williams and Savannah Spence. Welcome to both of you. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good, good afternoon. Good morning. Just yes, maybe somebody just woke up. Jeez, yes. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, well, thank you both for being here. Um, and we are actually, we're coming to you, audience, live um, from LaGuardia Web Radio Studios here in the M building. So very exciting. Um, and we're also here, of course, with our fantastic uh, producer, Chris. And Chris, is this the first show that has been done in the studio since like COVID since yeah he's nodding so this is exciting so thank you especially for being here for the very first uh what's going on that's being held uh in person again so we uh we love to we love to see it um so I am uh going to be talking to you both actually about a really really cool uh event that's coming up I believe it's February 9th right um which is the Rough Draft Film Festival uh, so both of you are going to be very much involved in that. Um, but first, what we always tend to do with what's going on is to just get a little bit about our guests. Uh, so I know Paul and Savannah, um, you are both, well, I know Paul, you're a recent graduate uh, of LaGuardia now attending Lehman College. Yes. Shout out on the sweatshirt. Shout out to Lehman. <laughs> uh, and so, and Savannah, you are a current student in uh, both film and media studies correct or correct. Yeah. yeah yep okay fantastic um and so and uh i know that you are also um working as at lpac where this event is going to be held right absolutely yes. yeah so you can give us like the uh the deep behind the scenes about the rough draft film festival um but like i said before that we want to hear a little bit about both of your backgrounds so paul uh we'll start with you mm -hmm. and what's fun fact i actually know both paul and savannah savannah and i have met on a, a couple of occasions and paul and i have had uh classes together and had many adventures so uh yeah i already know probably a little bit about you paul but, but tell our audience um just a little bit about yourself and uh, and uh, your journey and what brings you here uh, today. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Well, I started my journey at LaGuardia fall of 2021. Uh, it was just coming right out of the pandemic, and I just decided to make a change for the better in my own personal life. You know, and LaGuardia was the first school that I thought of, um, just because it's it's a school that's just been around the, the neighborhood in New York State Tri-State area. You know, I'm from East Harlem, so it's just been something that has been just I've always been drawn to LaGuardia. Uh, so yeah, so fall 2021, uh, I became a film and television major, uh, and then I became. Uh, film club president uh, my first semester there I wanted to uh, be really active in the LaGuardia community and it, I had such a wonderful time there and then I finally graduated in June of this uh, well I almost said this year of last <laughs> year because I'm still in 2023 um, and it's been amazing you know I, I participated at Lehman College you know full-time student but I'm always finding time to just participate in any activity that I can um, and yeah, I, I work at LPAC now. I'm an assistant manager with Savannah, and it's been a, an incredible journey. Fantastic. Yeah, and I know um, you also, you were down here in the station recording some things for Lehman as well, for one of your classes in Lehman. So still actively involved in all the time. film, yeah. podcasts, like all that production stuff. All the time, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And you were also a member of the President's Society when you were here at LaGuardia, Absolutely, correct? absolutely. Yeah. I was an overachiever at, at LaGuardia. You know, I wanted to be everything, President Society, Film Club President. You know, I just wanted to be a stand-up citizen in our community at LaGuardia. Absolutely, and you continue <laughs> to be. I mean, it, yeah, it's, thank you. it's so cool. I, I always say I love when alumni come back and, you know, continue to be involved at LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. um, and you certainly have been, and so you've been very involved, as you said, from day one. Um, and certainly in my classes when we were together, um, I, I could see yes. that. I could see. Yes, I was like, yes, definitely yes, yes. overachiever. Like always, always striving for like bigger, better. Thank and you, um, and now you're you're achieving it. So that's that's awesome. I'm I'm uh, I'm psyched to have you back in this room with us. Uh, get Thank to you. tell us about it a little bit. It's good to be back. Yeah. And Savannah, uh, a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah. So I came to LaGuardia. It was September, two thousand two. Mm -hmm. It was like a last minute decision. Got in. Nice. The first time I saw Paul. Uh, was here I think we it was go. my COVID <laughs> test. No, it was either from my COVID test to come here back when they were doing that, uh -huh. or 
it was for orientation. I was just wandering around, and he was walking with something. I was like, that looks like a professor. I, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't gosh. know. That's, that's an overachiever. There you go. <laughs> it's like, I, I didn't know. He, he works here, obviously. <laughs> so I went through my whole first semester in fall, and then we officially met in spring. Uh, I was taking my first video production class, and Paul was just like hanging around. I saw him at the bulletin board, and I'm like, "Hey, can you put up a calendar, please?" So I know what's going on because I don't usually use Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. So, and then Paul offered me. He's like, "Do you want to be a film club vice president?" I'm like, "Sure." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, "Sure." Nice. Well, I, I saw the potential in you. I, I don't know, but there was something about you that I, I knew Aww. you can handle work. You know, I, I you struck me as a student who wanted to be here, to wanted to learn and grow, and you know, I, I took the chance and I was like, I, I wonder if she would be interested in film club, and well, well, I was, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And now I'm currently the film club president. I yeah. work at LPAC, which is go. also thanks to Paul, called over our house manager at the time, and he's like, you know, who would be a perfect fit <laughs> to work as an usher at LPAC? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so my extracurriculars are just basically club president, and then I work here. I'm not like Paul. I, I, I like to go home. I like to sleep sometimes. <laughs> okay. Who needs sleep? Come on. <laughs> I need more of it. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, yeah. No? Oh, that's fantastic. So kind of, uh, uh, you know, almost like a, a protege, you know? I see some following in the foot. It's very impressive. And, uh, and yeah, no, I definitely, I sense an overachiever in you too, Savannah. <laughs> we were just talking about the 100 you got on oh, the, yeah. the test on Tuesday. So, yeah, big, uh, big snap for that um yeah fantastic so being both of you then uh having terms as president of the film club you know could you tell me a little bit about that like what what does the film club do what is what is your role as the president there and and um what has that been like for you your experience with with the film club you can go first you're the you're the current active president Are you sure because <laughs> it's changed from the past so currently the film club how i have it running is we are liking to create anything. Um, we make short films, mostly short films, mostly shorts in front of our green screen, thanks to our, mes our mentor, Professor David Stott. <laughs> nice, yep. We also make TV in the TV studio. That's usually very fun, very chaotic, <laughs> since so many people just want to sit in front of the screen. <laughs> yeah, yep, for sure. We have like three, so we have basically all that. Oh, this spring is looking really, really good. Um, I have a bunch of industry professionals coming to talk over Zoom nice. on certain months. Yeah. And we'll be making more shorts. We'll be making a lot of TV and just a whole bunch of fun. That's fantastic. And shout out to Professor Stott. Yeah. I know he, <laughs> Absolutely. He's a part of that fun Definitely. too. <laughs> but it's been fun being president. All my members are chill, very relaxed people, very creative, and they just mess so well together. They're yeah. also just very, very loud. I'm sorry, guys. You're just. <laughs> I, listen, I think you know, film, radio, television people. Come on, we're all we're all pretty loud. Yeah. Oh, that's very true. Very, very, very true. And now, is this similar to when you were uh, leading up the club? Paul, yes, uh, yeah. very very similar. I, you know, I I was blessed because I had so many different opportunities. You know, I got to manage uh, film club solo at one point in my academic journey, and then I also had other officers, you know, running the club with me. So I, you know, it. It really taught me organization. It taught me how to, you know, survival instincts. It taught me how to communicate with other students. You know, one of my favorite parts was just having movie nights and just watching films with other students. And yeah. it was fun. You know, I miss those moments where we can just talk about films. And I miss LaGuardia Live and participating in mm -hmm. all the activities and like pretending. I remember there was one session where I, I was watching footage and it was people making believe that they were doing a commercial. You know, I have a structure settlement and I need <laughs> cash now. It was so fun watching people just have fun. And I miss that, you know. I, uh, I wish I can go back. But, yeah. That reminds me, for our last day, you know, it's the second to last day, I had to um, do the Barbie movie, but for Ken. Oh, finally, club. his moment to shine. Yeah, they, I made them all sing Push. 
That was so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Now, do they have uh, like a film club and stuff like that at Lehman as well? Like, do they have a similar? They do. Vibe there? Yeah. They they do. Um, the difference between LaGuardia and Lehman for sure is that film club at Lehman is conjoined with theater club, so it's it's mm. it's one and the same over there. Versus at LaGuardia, um, I was hoping to push for more inclusion between film club and theater club. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had successful crossover moments, but I, I wish one thing mm -hmm. um, that I would have done as president was have, you know, more togetherness. Because I think, you know, we're not one in the same, but we're very alike in terms of creativity, for sure. And, you know, I think theater club can benefit from film club but just as much as film club can benefit from, you know, those of, in theater. You know, actors want to be in film. Filmmakers need actors, you know? So <laughs> that's one thing that I've, I've always thought of, that I wish I... that. I was able to do more yeah, as yeah. president. Absolutely. And you know what? There's such a, a link up as we were talking about, about, you know, these kind of personalities, right, that are attracted to these creative pursuits. And uh, I think we, uh, and I know Professor Stott and I have talked about too, we're like the film club, radio club, theater yes. club, like yes. having all of these, you know, creative minds in, in this one space because we can you know, work off of each other and work with each other. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's always, I always, I, I tell folks my background um, before, you know, coming to LaGuardia is in radio, television and film production. Mm -hmm. And it was all one, you know, big program um, in, uh, in my undergraduate program. And so it was so cool to be able to work with people who are going to be going into TV, who are going to be going into film, who are going to be going into audio production and Absolutely. having people who are, you know, on the front end, right. Who wanted to perform and people on the back end who are doing the production and you know post-production and and all that so it's it's a really um there's a lot of dynamism it's a very exciting yes. you know group to be a part of so yeah and i could see that with you guys uh for sure and uh, and your experiences in the club now with the club and i imagine um there here this is my segue um spoiler uh so do you have club members who will submit then um films to the rough draft film festival does that ever is there an overlap there at all yeah um when i was telling some of my club members the current ones right now i think two expressed interest and one definitely is going to be mm. since he's working on something cool very right. excited to see the <laughs> yeah 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 i feel like it's 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 fertile ground to kind mm -hmm. of have members of these various clubs film club particularly um, showcase their work. Absolutely. Um, and I actually, I just, our, our, um, wonderful host, uh, Hugo Fernandez is, uh, is texting in from afar. So if you notice audience who's watching on Twitch, <laughs> I have my phone out and I swear I'm not scrolling my, my newsfeed. Um, but, uh, <laughs> oh, in the chat. Perfect. Uh, yeah, Chris is, Chris is watching the, uh, the Twitch chat as well. Um, but uh, I just got a reminder from Hugo um, about the humanities uh, major, which is actually uh, fits very well with wh what we're kind of talking about with all these creatives working together, um, that you can take classes as a new major where you can take classes throughout the humanities department. So it's a humanities major um, and you can kind of like build your own. Um, so it's, it's kind of choose your own ending, um, the humanities version. Uh, and so being, you know, and it is, it is really interesting as humanities majors, right? That, you know, I do when I teach different classes and I know Savannah, you said you're gonna be taking a class with yeah. me next semester, you know, Paul's saying, so we have a lot of film students who take like communication studies classes or, mm -hmm. or radio production classes. We have theater students who are taking film classes and we have, you know, we have this overlap, right? Absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. And so now, yeah, sh you know, shameless plug that we actually have a major that you can design your program in that way. So you can get a taste of, of all these different oh, that's great. programs. That's yeah. Great. How jealous are you, Paul, that you Very, missed the boat on I was that? just <laughs> thinking that. I was just thinking, oh, man, I wish this was available two years ago. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. would have been great. Uh, well, you know what? It's You can come in and, you know, be a mentor for the students who are going I through that program. I would love that. That'd you know? be great. We'd love to. Ha we love to uh, you know what? We'll talk after this show. Oh, too so we can have you come into some sure. of my classes so savannah maybe you can take advantage of uh, oh, some of that uh, some of the, the the mixing so uh oh hugo's hugo saying well done okay cool so i, I covered it i covered it well <laughs> chris is chris is rolling his eyes at me he's like this isn't how you do it jamie this is how we do what's going on um very transparent 
So uh, fantastic. Then, yeah, so, so kind of getting back to that creativity, right? All mm -hmm. these creatives working together. Can you tell me a little bit about the Rough Draft Film Festival? Because I, I, I am fascinated by this. I think this is such a cool event that we have um, and that we, we have had in the past as well. Mm -hmm. And kind of what sets it apart, to my understanding, is just what it says, right? It's a rough draft. So you Absolutely. get to actually see mm -hmm. works in progress, mm -hmm. which is so important. Right. Well, yeah. So when you go to a film festival, um, you're normally seeing the final product, right? You're seeing the end result. So the difference between um, Rough Cut and I would say our contemporaries is that we are celebrating the work in progress. We're celebrating the artistic uh, progress and the creativity. Uh, and we're hopefully with our workshops uh, are aiding assistance in providing uh, support in their growth. You know, then that, that's what we're really trying to celebrate and honor and tone into. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And, and I apologize. I said rough draft. It's the Rough Cut, rough Cut. Film Festival. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so this is great. So it's a film festival. So um, people yes. will get to showcase their films, but also there are workshops, you said. Absolutely. Oh, so what so are these we workshops? Are, so, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's... It's a surprise, but it's <laughs> we are planning. We are in the progress of creating workshops that are going to help our artistic, uh, you know, our participants in their artistic development. Um, Savannah, do you want to just share some, uh, maybe one or two possible ideas? Or I don't yeah. mean to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. I'll share the one. <laughs> um, so for especially aspiring filmmakers, just going to be starting out. Finance is a big issue. How mm. do you get it without you know? kind of going around with the uh, mug on the train saying, oh, please, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm going to make my first mm -hmm. film. Right, right, right. <laughs> the ultimate crowdsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's real crowdfunding. So one of the things that we're thinking of having for a workshop is a producer's workshop. Everybody in film needs to have some type of business background. Either you take a class mm -hmm. or you're aspiring to become a producer. It's good to have that knowledge. Good to have that knowledge outside Absolutely. of film. Mm -hmm. Especially with just financing in general like how do you do it other than mommy daddy please yeah <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not that much <laughs> yeah yeah that's a great idea yeah so having an actual workshop on how you know okay how can you as a, an aspiring filmmaker actually go get the funds for mm -hmm. your film because as we know films are i mean if you're talking like big blockbuster films they're incredibly expensive nowadays oh, I mean, yes. millions of dollars um i was just listening to a podcast the other day where uh the hosts were talking about like a fun indie film and they were like oh yeah it's this great indie film it only costs ten thousand dollars and it was like okay first of all only ten thousand dollars like okay but secondly they were like no you can't make a film for ten thousand dollars like there's right. no way and they're like well they did it and they're like yeah that's because they didn't pay like a big part of their staff and probably like no members of their production team and things like that were willing to basically volunteer right. and it's things like that that you you know might not know about right like mm -hmm. you're like oh i'm in it for the creativity i'm in it because i want to tell these stories but yeah oh yeah the dollars and cents so i love that i think that's a really important workshop to have 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. and now are there so there's going to be multiple workshops i get mm -hmm. sense and then there's going to be a big like a screening in uh, the El correct. in LPAC or uh, correct. So mm -hmm. uh, all of the screenings will be held at our uh, main stage theater, um, and then there'll be screenings, and then there'll be parties to celebrate our you know our artists, and then you know there'll be prizes at the end. I'm not going to say what the prizes are. You know, uh, no spoilers. No spoilers. Right. On the show. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but there are incentives, and it's it's just going to be a wonderful thing for artists. You know, and then I, I do want to say this is super important. We're not just looking for, you know, current CUNY students. We're looking for alumni. We're looking for, you know, anyone who's interested in filmmaking all throughout the New York State, tri-state area. So this is a really Very big, cool. huge opportunity for, you know, any filmmaker who wants to just, you know, get themselves out there. You know, this is a chance to just showcase um, their artistry. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's not about the final product. It's about, you know, the the journey yeah you know, it's not about the destination it's about the journey that that's you know what i'm trying to get at and yeah it, it's 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 a wide fishing net we're trying to cast you know so if anyone wants to um submit their films and it's you know 15 to 20 minutes you know it's just submit it get it done and you know let's let's celebrate it you know that, that's why we're here 
I love it. I love it. It's the process. It's the journey. And and celebrating that. Celebrating yeah. that journey. Um, so 15 to 20 minutes. And I didn't realize that. So I knew this was open to CUNY students, to LaGuardia students, but also alumni and members alumni. of the larger community. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Absolutely. And again, I think it's so novel that we have this this works in progress festival, right? That Absolutely. again, you don't see that mm -hmm. very often. Now, we, we've we done this, how many years have we been doing the Rough Cut Festival? Is this the first time or have we done this before? Time. Okay, I was gonna time. say, I'm like, cause in, somehow in my mind I was, I was thinking, you know, oh, this is such a great idea. We had to have done this, like at least, you know, last year or something, but mm -hmm. no, this is brand new. Fresh, um, yes. Oh man, so I anticipate this having a long life then here at LaGuardia because I, I just, yeah, it's it's very unique and I think it's much needed. Very cool. Absolutely, thank you, thank you so much. Absolutely, no, no. And you know, I I think it's, uh, and I'll, I'll give a little bit of uh, some history between Paul and I away. Mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about like, it's the journey, it's not the final product. Um, you know, we had this great opportunity over the summer to, yeah, yes, to yes, work yes, in yes, this yes. young artist program. Paul, you were um, one of the folks there who was, and I, so I know as a fact, the products that you make, I know you're a great filmmaker. Thank and you. so, um, <laughs> You know, but that was one of the, you know, we went out, in, we were in Massachusetts and in, in nature mm -hmm. and really working in this like communal group setting um, with all the creative juices flowing in between yes, everyone. Yes, great. And, and then at the end had this like showcase of works in progress mm -hmm. of, you know, here is where we are and yes. celebrate where we are today. Um, and it's almost like there's a, I don't know, a piece of that that's in this rough cut film festival. That's, that's yeah, so no, cool. that's, uh, that, I think that's where the magic is, you know? Um, I don't know if that idea from Chantagar uh, got word to LaGuardia. I, I'm not saying <laughs> that at all. How did this happen, Paul? Were you whispering in somebody's it's, ear? <laughs> no, but it's it's something very similar. And I'm, but I'm, but I'm glad it's happening. You know, um, I think a lot of the times young artists, you know, they get so caught up in how I'm going to get it done. You know, the, the finished product, the end goal. Like, how am I going to just get it out there? And sometimes you got to just take a step back, see what you, what the cards are, you know, and celebrate that, honor that, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what's going to get you to that final destination that you want to go to. So it's important to really take your time, you know? Um, and I, I think Rough Cut is that place where any artist can say, okay, this is where I'm at. You know, let's participate in some workshops to get the skills that I need to, or the knowledge or the information that I need to achieve that final product, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would say that this is a good um, festival for other festivals to also get involved and connect to as well. Mm. Um, just because, you know, uh, other festivals might want to screen out submissions, you know, and uh, <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> I'm shameless here, um, but I feel like, you know, Rough Cut could be a place where other festivals can go, hey, where where are these artists coming from? Like where where mm -hmm. where are they on their journey journey, and how can we support them as well? Right. Um, so that could be an also another opportunity for other festivals to tap into us as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, and and Savannah, I know. So I know Paul, you weren't necessarily whispering in anyone's ears. Savannah, did you have any say in the design of this rough rough cut film festival? Any takes? <laughs> yeah, I was the one working on the workshops because it's like, what's the best thing for an aspiring filmmaker like myself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Producing, financing, the other secret one I don't want to reveal yet. Okay, that's the surprise. All <laughs> but right. that surprise one is like, just like, with the, like the whole of filmmaking, you're, you're mostly going to want to be behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So things like that, what we could learn more of, more hands-on cool. type of experience. Because mm -hmm. we, we get a ton of experience with our classes, we get rental cameras and we go out in the field. But some of us might not get that opportunity because work, family, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's have a workshop for that. But these are the things I actually do want to see myself because mm -hmm. I want more experience. Even if I get enough experience, more is always like better. Yeah. Especially in this line of work. Absolutely. I, I, I always tell students that too, like in, in this f field, particularly the experience is what might, you know, take the internships, submit the work to film festivals, like do the workshops, you know, mm -hmm. especially when you're sharing these experiences with other people. Actually the film um, Rough Cut is going to be great, especially just to get that feedback even from other people that you just go up to and it's like, Hey, how did you like this? We did this in my class. It was my professor with extra credit. Okay. We were <laughs> screaming his Rough Cut, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. documentary. It was really good. Nice. But it's things like that. It's like, it can help you, especially 
for later film festivals since you're mostly going to be trying to get into film festivals to get your work out there it just doesn't come to you you have to actually go put it out there mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that, and that's another thing i think people don't always recognize right i mean is you have to really push your work when you are in a field like this to get it into these film festivals to you know get it seen by more and more people to do screenings to you know and and um i think what's really cool and and to get it but what both of you are saying you know this is such an opportunity i mean laguardia has a number of film festivals right mm -hmm. and um this is an opportunity to get your work seen um, and get mm -hmm. practice in that process, yes. right? That you're talking yes. about, like shopping it around. Um, so we have we have this now. We have so how many? You get, you're you're the professionals at this. How many film festivals do we now have at Laguardia that that you would say we have this one? We Thompson. have the Thompson. the Thompson Avenue, right? Thompson Avenue. I th I know that's like the big one, the Thompson Avenue the Film one. Festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I would say now, would you see? Like submit something to the rough cut and then work on it. Continue working on it. Submit the full, final product to the Thompson Avenue. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. Go cool. full circle. You know, and exactly. then find those producers. Get mm -hmm. out there. Submit it to the Sundance and you know mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, quick question about the workshop since we're with the workshop guru. <laughs> Are you having a workshop on like how to sneak Easter eggs into <laughs> your films? Because that's like one of my favorite things uh, when you see like little fun little things that you don't <laughs> like in all the Pixar movies, you know, maybe for next year. I don't know. I'll keep it for next year. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me know because I'll show up to that one. And, you know, I'll maybe maybe I'll get back into filmmaking. I made one documentary. Uh, many moons ago uh, that I worked on a team because as you all know right, it's a team project when mm -hmm. you do when you make a film you don't make a film alone you never right. you can't right absolutely um, and so I remember it was a, a group of four of us were making this documentary um, about and because uh, I'm a true crime nerd and so it was about an unsolved murder that actually had happened on our um, undergraduate campus and uh, we you know, did all this work. We got these great interviews with people. Um, we actually had to do some of the, like where you backlight the person who's being interviewed and like disguise their voice. Cause they're like, I don't want to, there was like a psychic who was involved trying to like find the, the murderer. And then, um, they, they didn't, but, um, that person wanted to be like disguised. So we were like, Oh cool. How do we like play around with these effects? And, um, it was, it was so much work. We did all this stuff. It was a lot of fun, but it was hours and hours and hours, all these efforts. And then, we, it was just, that was it. We didn't do anything with it after that. We screened it. And then I, I one of my colleagues who I was working with was kind of like, oh, I'm going to shop this around to film festivals. And I didn't know in my naivete at the time, like what that actually means. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, you have fun with that. Okay, good luck. Let me know how it goes. And it, nothing ever happened with it. Um, so what, I, what do you recommend to students who are like maybe how I was then where you're making these projects, um, you are, you know, putting your heart and soul into them. And what can you say to them to like, as especially, you, you know, you, Paul, as someone who is now an alum, right? And Savannah, as someone who's currently going through this work, right? That, you know, okay, don't drop it. Don't just let it go. What would you say to motivate someone to like take those next steps to submit to the Rough Cut Film Festival, to submit to Thompson App, to to, to outside of the, the college even? Hmm. I would suggest you know push yourself, take that leap of faith, and we're here to support any you know any artist that wants to do this. Um, I, I would suggest you know the first step is create it, shoot it, submit it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's that simple um <laughs> i don't mean to be you know it's really i, I mean for me it's 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 nerve-wracking because we, we don't know our finances we don't know you know what eyes are out there watching our films you know we mm -hmm. we're, we're we're scared we're intimidated you know i'm, I'm kind of speaking from my own external you know Absolutely. experiences that's but, what we want yeah that's why you're here yeah and <laughs> I, I would just say just just do it. That that's been my that's you know what my advisors have always told me just sh shut up and do it. Yeah. Just <laughs> you know stop making excuses for yourself. Just do it. We have phones. We have cameras on our phones. They may not be the best quality, but hey, just shoot whatever you can. Submit it to the rough cut, 
and let us help you develop it more. You know, we will always find a way to make it better. Um, and I think that's the most important message I want to definitely put out there for our festival is that we're here to support that idea that you have at the end of your journey. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just just come to us. Let us help you. Let us help um, support your idea. Love that. Yeah. As as my advisor once told me, it doesn't have to be your magnum opus. It just has to be good enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just. Yep. I mean, you can make a film for zero dollars nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, machinima is a thing that exists. You can submit machinima to the rough cut. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a right. ton of resources how to do that. I mean, Unreal Engine 5, if you have the machinery for it, either the Apple laptop or the Windows rig, mm -hmm. that'll run the thing. Um, Epic does not really charge for that yet, and they won't anyway for um, indie filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So you have that right there. That's like at least under 100 if you want to get animations. Mm -hmm. Just actually do it. That's actually the one thing that I talk about to a lot of students here. It's like if you have an idea, shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> shoot yeah. it. Submit it to a festival and keep going from there. And there's a ton of resources afterwards, especially. Like look at all the people on TikTok getting job opportunities and sponsorships, and they're just in front of a green screen with their phone. Yeah. Quite yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite literally. literally. Right. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, it, we live in this really fan, fascinating time, I think, um, for these kinds of fields that we're in, right? Because of what you're getting at, that we have technology at our fingertips now that is, a lot of it is open resource, right? Uh, that you can make films, even if they're not your magnum opus, quote unquote, right? right. But um, that, that you can fully create, um, you know, do yourself and, and get out there. Right. Yeah, and I mean, look at uh, Rooster Teeth. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, back old company back in the day, they're still around from YouTube. Who their first big series was based from Halo. They used the Halo yep. game. Uh, I forgot which one it was at the time. I don't think it was Rich. Um, and they made Red versus Blue. Mm -hmm. Right. And that whole thing became giant, making them like millions, you know, dollars. And they have a really good relationship with Microsoft. So it's like just take it from there and go. Yeah, and now they have even, right, they have um, more shows. They, like, they started with Red and Blue, yeah. which Chris, our producer, is over there putting up two fingers. And I'm like, wait, we only have two minutes? What's going on? And he's like, Halo 2. Oh, Halo 2. So it's Halo 2. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, I mean, they changed. They went to Maya. Yeah, I, I don't. I never you know, played the Halo, seasons, so. you know the later seasons. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't exist, this, but. I had a boyfriend who played Halo, but I never did. So I, I, I know, I know, like, uh, what is it, Master Sergeant? And, uh, Master <laughs> <laughs> Right? Isn't that the. No? Am I. Is that the wrong thing? Okay. Master yeah. Chief. Master Chief. God, the, Master Sergeant's actually a thing in the military, right? So is Master, Master Chief. Chief is. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's I'm getting confused. From their success, they made Ruby with uh, Monty Ohm. That's what I was just going to say. And Monty yeah. Ohm, uh, people should definitely look him up. One of my favorites from back in the day, uh, he did Dead Fantasy. I think mm -hmm. it was one of his very first few works, and that's how he got on with Rooster Teeth. They were so impressed by that. And mm -hmm. Dead Fantasy used a bunch of different assets from other games like Final Fantasy. Right. And one of the fighting games, I don't remember. I just know I'm a very big Final Fantasy fan, so it's like, that's all I need to know. Yeah. And they made Ruby, and Ruby's on Crunchyroll. Yes, I yes. Think it still is. Yeah, it is. I, I have a subscription. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, and I, I will say, and, and, you know, for anyone interested, like, go to the Rooster Teeth website, what we're talking about. It's... um. It's really interesting, again, to see this overlap in these creative fields because some of these um, resources that you're mentioning, Savannah, are also the resources that are kind of uh, open source for uh, game developers. Mm -hmm. So like Unreal Engine, right? So people who are in the uh, game development world and who are creating games are using the same tools that you can actually use to also create films mm -hmm. or, or web series and things like that. So we do have unprecedented access now to these, yep. these types of technologies, many of which are, are free. So yeah, that's a very, very good point. Um, yeah, maybe we could, Chris, we'll find out if we could like throw some of those resources in the YouTube. Uh, we'll, we'll make that happen. Yeah. Cause I think that's a, that's a great, uh, a great thing for folks who are listening to check out, especially if you're an aspiring filmmaker. Yes. So to get, you know, kind of full circle to the rough draft film festival, I, I have, I have some information here on my <clears throat> device. So the deadline to submit films, February 9th mm -hmm. at yes. 5 PM. Yes. yes. Okay. Feb 9, 5 PM. 
Remember that. Um, again, I'm going to repeat what you said, Paul. So it's, you know, current CUNY students, alumni, and aspiring filmmakers throughout the New York tri-state area. Correct. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Yes. Right. And any genre or style. Any yeah. genre or style. Yes. Okay. So for like horror movie buffs like me, we can. I hope oh, yeah. we get a lot of horror and comedy. <laughs> <laughs> what about a horror comedy? I, even better. Even better. <laughs> uh, I, I love it. I love it. Bring your horror ideas, please. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> I, I will say, what kind of films do you hope to see submitted to this festival other than horror comedy? Oh, man. I. The more creative, I would say, the more. I, I, this is me personally. The mm -hmm. more creative, the better. The better outcome. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen films. I, I did an internship last summer um, at for Catch Your Film Series, and it was an incredible, incredible job because I, I, I was a screener, and I saw over 400 films, and I've seen wow. folks just put things together, and I'm questioning why. But then I've seen folks just do incredible work with such limited budgets, you know? So anything is truly possible and that's that's the exciting part that I, I'm looking forward to seeing is what are your ideas like what what are you bringing to cinema like what are you what are you dreaming about and I you know like I, I want to see the, the the creation that people have because it's, it's beautiful it's art absolutely yeah what about you Savannah I hope to see some mission I'm up <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay cool cool just straight up yeah literally I mean come on it's right on your computer <laughs> yeah you don't Come have on, to go guys. outside. No excuses. Yeah. I know it's cold. Stay inside with the computer. Yeah, get that machine out and submit it. Submit it. I love it. All right, cool, cool. So, uh, we we have your your dreams for for this yes. uh, festival. What you hope to see in it. Um, February 9th to everybody mm -hmm. is the deadline to submit by 5 p.m. And then the festival itself is taking place on the weekend of March 26th through 28th. Correct. Yes, right here at the Main Stage Theater. Correct. Yep. Fantastic. So uh, kind of as we um, wrap up, I have a couple questions for both of you. Mm. So mm, compelling. Mm, my invisible beard that I'm. <laughs> uh, so and the people who are listening to this in just audio are like, what is she talking about? That's right. what's so fun about Twitch. <laughs> when, when Chris puts this on SoundCloud, all these like things that we're doing visually are not going to they're not going to make any sense. Oh. oh, well, watch it on Twitch, people. Check it out on YouTube. Um, so, first question, mm -hmm. what do you envision for the future of the Rough Cut Film Festival? Where do you see this going? Because I'm going to presume, again, this is year mm -hmm. one, and I presume this is going to have a long story going forward. I hope it grows. I hope that we can start at LaGuardia and develop something at Hunter, Brooklyn College, Lehman. I hope that we can extend to our, our CUNY brothers and sisters and just have this program be something that's bigger than just a CUNY festival. You know, I hope in at least 10 years, Rough Cut is, it, it's up there with Tribeca, you know? It, Heck it's, yeah. it's, it's up there with uh, Sundance. It's it's up there um, with all these wonderful organizations that are across the country. That That's what I personally hope. There you go. Call Robert De Niro. Get him over here. Get yes, the Tribeca people. Yes. Come on. What about you, Savannah? I want Rough Cut to be our launch pad as mm. it grows and grows and grows for it filmmakers, expiring anyone to come into with this short film that they have and they're like, let me try to get this out there. Let me see what feedback I can get. And I want to go from there. I want, that's basically the goal is to get it as the first place they come into for that first time experience. Mm -hmm. And from there they can even come back and say, you know where I started, where I got like this film, started shaping and envisioning it. Uh, Alpac, uh, at Alpac's Rough Cut Festival. Yeah. that That's really what I want. I just want us to like help grow and grow along with it, with Same these filmmakers. Here. I want to help plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Plant them, water them, see where they go from there. Mm -hmm. I love that as a, as a launch pad. As I always, you know, tell students, whatever you go on and do, whatever greatness you achieve in your future, don't forget to give me and all your other professors at LaGuardia, shout out. You know, Absolutely. So. Don't forget, <laughs> no, but for real, Absolutely. don't forget to give LPAC and the Rough Cut Film Festival a shout out, right? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just, just, just a, a touch. One. Just like in the credits, you know, as they're rolling by, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So then my final question for both of you as we're, you know, running through time here is what's next for each of you? So we know mm. what's next for Rough Cut. What's next for each of you? Whoever wants to go first. 
I'm not ready to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's too, it's too big. Yeah. It's like, who are you? Well, who are any of us? Where are any of us going? <laughs> oh. Oh. Savannah, what about you? Oh, are you ready? Yeah. So hopefully, um, I was reached out from an opportunity to do a, how would you put a, kind of like a challenge. So I already got a small crew together. It's only for like the colleges. I think it's called the College 48. Mm. Make a short film and practically, it's two days, but it's not two days. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So yeah. we're hoping we get to do that. That's going to be in February. Nice. I do not expect to sleep at all. <laughs> for sure. No, no. That's when you're making a film, I don't think yeah. you get that luxury. <laughs> no. No, I'm just anticipating that. And I'm excited for it. Fantastic. You're involved. Cool. Okay, so I'm ready to answer. Um, <laughs> I want to I wanna finish my academics, get my bachelor's, and um, eventually work my way into the film production uh, industry. And then I know in my heart I belong in television. So I definitely want to transition from film to television and work on my own TV show. I'm not going to say what it is, but <laughs> I definitely do want... I, you know, I have these, these dreams of mine um, that I've been working for for a long time, and... I, I want to see them happen. So, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I I believe in you both, and I know you. you will achieve those Thank dreams. You. Having you know, just not even from this conversation, but from who you are and what you've been doing outside of this room. And I've been fortunate enough to to get to know um, each of you in your own way. And so I I absolutely uh, believe in that. And so I, I have no doubt um, we're going to be seeing your names on the big screen or the small the te television screen. Film either, screen. Way. either way, either way, any <laughs> of it, all of the above. And um, do expect to see my name in the credits. So yeah. thank you absolutely. very much. Yeah. Uh, no, but it's been such a pleasure talking to both of you, uh, Savannah Spence and Paul Williams, uh, here to represent the Rough Cut Film Woo! Festival, Woo! the inaugural, uh, happening at the LaGuardia Performing Arts Center, LPAC. Um, and again, as a reminder, uh, so it's happening. The, the festival is being held March 26th to 28th, uh, 2024, this year. So mark the calendars. And our filmmakers out there who are tuning in, make sure you submit uh, February 9th by 5 p.m. Um, and, oh, yeah, uh, how, how are we going to be submitting these films? What, what's, what's the best way to submit it? Is it, uh, you know, through, the, through the, uh, what, the, the email that's here on this uh, document I have here? Yes. Um, the best way to submit your films, we have a QR code we'll be sending out. Um, and... There is also a flyer, especially around campus. Um, it says Rough Cut. So if you just scan the QR code, we'll send out a link. Um, also, if you have any inquiries, you can email us, and then we'll get you that QR code in case if you have. Uh, you can just email us at LPAC box office, um, uh, box office at lagcc.cuny.edu. Fantastic. So that is LPAC box office at lagcc.cuny.edu yes. with any questions. Uh, Paul and Savannah will be there in front of the computer waiting yep. to answer your questions. Um, and uh, and we will uh, hopefully be talking to you then after the film festival to hear about how fantastic it went and um, what your plans are for next time around. So, wonderful. Well, thank you again, Savannah and Paul. Wonderful, thank wonderful. Thank you for having us. Um, absolutely. Thank you. thank you, LPAC. Thank you, Evelyn, for Evelyn Lomark for putting this together. Um, and thank you, Hugo, who was here in spirit and via text the entire time, um, even though he couldn't be here today. And, of course, thank you to Chris, who is going to play us out with some more Brian Eno, I believe. Uh, so, Hugo picked that out special. Chris is going, I have no idea who this is, but I'm going to play it anyway. So uh, thank you, all of you, for tuning in. And uh, please join us next time um, in the studio or still, you know, maybe from home, too. We're, we're now in a hybrid format, it seems, uh, for more what's going on. So tune in next time. Bye.